Let's take a look at the compositions. This is the comp that has gotten Method Orange so far. Chan the Animal going to be on that Warlock backed up by Wealthy Man. Here we go. We saw this similar matchup, Cleave versus the Destruction Mage, but the Death Knight Demon Hunter is a lot less punch and much more about consistency. So I don't think the channel will be overwhelmed the same way as we saw Swapsy in the European region. I'm curious to see how Cubsy maintains his mana. The last time we saw this from the Super Frogs, they focused on crowd control. So Polymorph Trill, if that Polymorph is dispelled, you then Polymorph him two more times and then fear him and really prevent Trill from connecting to Cubsy. This way you will limit the amount of mana rifts and you will also allow Cubsy to regenerate mana and have more opportunities to drink. Although this time Trill is focusing much more so on damage, going after wealthy men, getting an Iron Bark exchanged early on. Cubsy is running that Feral Affinity. I think it's definitely wise to get some extra damage for his team because his composition really lacks the ability to push someone over the edge. So bringing Feral Affinity on a Restoration Druid to add some extra damage to your team can be an effective way to then deal that final blow. Yeah, Wealthy Man, once again, he's playing that build where he has very powerful Frost Bolts with the Lonely Winter, as well as that Tunnel of Ice, uh, Azerite Trait, and Flash Freeze Azerite Trait, so he's going to be very dangerous if left alone. The problem is, if you go after Wealthy Man, slow down his Frost Bolt damage, then all of a sudden you have a Chanimals that's just going to be smoking you with Chaos Bolts, so definitely a great option here for Super Frogs. I think that having two high threat caster targets is definitely going to be ideal against Method Orange, especially moving on into the late game. It was effective for them in the past with that crowd control diminishing return, Polymorph and Fear. Very effective at just pinning melee DPS down, and there's no real threat. There's no Windwalker. I think maybe at some point we need to see Trill switch to the Windwalker, and it really just depends on this match right now. If Method Orange can't manage to pull off victory here, I want to see Method Orange go back to that bread and butter we've seen before with Mez and Trill playing together on that Windwalker. Walker Death Knight. Mez gets bursted down as Chanimal really is taking this game into his own hands, getting triple fears onto Seedoo. No polymorph attempt by Wealthy Man just yet, getting denied on it by Seedoo. If any polymorph is able to be landed on him, he actually does manage to get the polymorph. Both Chanimal and Wealthy Man free casting. Although, again, before dampening, Death Strike going to be very effective at just sustaining Mez. Still, the mana, let's see how the mana looks as Cubsy comes out of form. It's looking solid, and that's the main win condition for Method Orange. If they can't manage to develop that lead, they're going to lose out on their main win condition. Interesting. See, so he's actually playing Drain Eye Shaman, I believe, so he's going to have a little bit more healing with that Drain Eye Racial. If it's a heal over time effect on the target when he needs it, so a little bit more instant cast healing that CD's opting to go with on his Restoration Shaman. Mez, is he playing Drain Eye as well? Or is that a Night Elf? I think it might be a Night Elf. Kind of hard. It's hard to see in this position. Yeah, I think it's Night Elf. Look yeah, for the elf. tail. Look for the tail. They, <laughs> they are both Night Elf to dodge the incoming Maledict's Trinkets. Both men crowd controlling Trill, bursting down Mez. Lots of damage on Mez. I mean, burst like that, another maybe four minutes into the game. I'm not sure if Mez really makes it out alive. So Super Frogs definitely have the potential. They just need to protect Cubsy until deeper into dampening. So far, Trill is getting some mana rifts now secured onto Cubsy. He tries to wild charge out of it, but that crowd control guarantees it will land. Trill is likely to not miss a single timing on that part. He's easily mastered that strategy of mana rift. Sidu chilling at the pillar, going for a couple healing waves. That's another win condition when facing the Shaman, is that Sidu will have to cast slow, long heals. And when facing a Warlock and a Mage, they have ranged interrupts to deny those long, slow heals. So there could be opportunity there for Super Frogs to find a kill as well. Yeah, wealthy man opting to use his Icy Veins in conjunction with Chanimal's Dark Soul. Anti-Magic Zone trades very effective into both of those offensives, and I much would I, I would have much rather see Super Frog split up those offensives. I would think it makes it much more difficult with sort of a two-pronged attack where Mez has to make a hard decision. Does he use the Anti-Magic Zone on Icy Veins, or is it on the Dark Soul? And that way they at least get effectiveness out of one of those offensive cooldowns. So definitely would like to see that from Super Frogs moving forward in this matchup. Both of these teams bringing in their most durable long distance compositions. Deep dampening definitely going to be required against these top caliber teams in the setups that they have brought to the North American Grand Finals today. Now, of course, there's a lot more on the line for Method Orange as they are on the cusp, the bottom end of the qualifying teams for the Spring Finals, where the Super Frogs are already guaranteed a spot. So, Sidu definitely looking for a first place performance to feel more comfortable and have a reliable chance at making it to the Spring Finals. 
Mez gets bursted down. Covers though with those death strikes. Frozen Orb placed. Wealthy Man trying to dish out some pain. Really, Mez is spending a lot of runic power just on death strike. Not able to really get too much pressure. Chanimal gates to safety as there was some momentum starting to develop. And that's the one thing with Chanimal is that his positioning is always on point. Knows exactly where to be at exactly every given moment in the game. And it's very important when you're playing a Warlock because you don't move really fast. So if you're standing in the wrong spot, it's going to take you a long time to get to the right spot, which is why we see him shine so much on that Warlock. Yeah, definitely. Now all three members of Method Orange are going to be hiding behind the pillar, eating the Blizzard, eating the Frozen Orb. But it's just kind of insignificant damage at this point, and Method Orange should be able to easily recover as they rotate to a new pillar. Actually gripping Channimals and looking for a little bit of damage on him, but with this positioning, Cubsy is able to go. He sneaks away, gets a drink. He's at completely reset on his mana, back to basically 100%. We are now at 6% dampening. And I really believe that Method Orange, things are going to start getting very scary for them. If they can't get Cubsy out of mana, eventually they're not really going to be able to get too much of a lead in this matchup, especially with Chanimals and Wealthy Man just free casting in the open. I think if Super Frogs take game one, we need to see Method Orange go back to their Windwalker Death Knight. They can't rely on this strategy because Super Frogs have brought a composition that can totally nullify it. Finally, some pressure with crowd control and Cubsy. Channel dips down to half, but he's also counter-aggressing despite that pressure in his face, trying to force Mez to run away. And that's sometimes an effective strategy is just do damage. If the opposing member can't stay in your face and you force them to run away, that's just as good as trading a defensive cooldown. So Channel focusing a lot more on counter-aggression and really just going at Mez toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Now with dampening at 11%, it will become increasingly more difficult for either side to maintain themselves into the fight. Definitely Channel's in midfield, still trying to get some pressure as Trill feeling confident, moving to get some damage onto Wealthy Man. Cubsy resets his mana once again. Sidu falling a little bit behind. Now if Channimals and Wealthy Man can get some damage rolling on Trill, he could be a vulnerable target here in midfield, but Mez just grips him over, getting some damage onto Channimals, really limiting the amount of damage he has available. And that's one of the things about these compositions that Method Orange is bringing. They have a lot of interrupts. Sidu with Grounding Totem and Wind Shear. Mez has um, Mind Freeze as well as Death Grip to interrupt Cast as well as Pet Stun and a Pet Interrupt and Trill has an Interrupt as well. So just a lot of disruption here on the side of Method Orange, but eventually with Polymorph and Fear, Frostbolt and Chaos Bolt, eventually Super Frogs will get off the cast of spells that they need to start making something happen. All right, Channel secures a double Shadow Fury. Wealthy Man follows up with a Polymorph, unfortunately breaking to the Infernals. Huge hit though. Mez dips low. That's an important objective out of the way. The Icebound Fortitude. Trill now getting caught by Cubsy. He's trying to burst him down. Finally showing that surprise with the Feral Affinity. They get the Glyre's Medallion from Trill. Cubsy could certainly be the X Factor in the team. And he's been patiently waiting to attack deeper into Dampening. Doesn't want to show his hands. And, but now they know that the Claw is there. Claw is there. Cubsy's going to be able to restealth and get the stuns that he needs. I think he's a lot more ferocious than just a little kitty cat there. So that, yes, that's better. Sidu gets interrupted. And like you said, later on in the game, Sidu's instant heals aren't going to be nearly as powerful as he needs. He's going to have to start channeling out those healing waves, chain heals potentially. That makes him very susceptible to Channel Spell Lock and Wealthy Man's Counter Spell. And if they can nail those consistently, Method Orange is going to continually fall behind. All right, Channel, what are you going to do? Deep into dampening, we've seen Destruction Warlocks get demolished. Will he be able to stay alive and counter-aggress against Method Orange in the grand finals of the North American Cup number four? Is this Method Orange's redemption? Can they finally rise back to glory? The former BlizzCon champions currently pinned down at the pillar, trying to escape away from that Frozen Orb, but Cubsy's going to jump into the fight. Chaos Bolt and a Feral Affinity. That's going to be pretty scary for Mez as he gets bursted, but he, he grips Chanimal in, tries to go maybe for a reversal. Very low on health. Sidu connects some big heals, stabilizes Mez for now. I'm really just waiting to see what Cubsy can get done with that Feral Affinity a, a few more minutes in. Yep, definitely have to see what he can get done. That additional damage might be able to close out the game, but Cubsy just continually running away, resetting his mana, now sitting very healthy. And I'm not exactly sure what Method Orange is going to do. They're going for these gripped attempts on Chanimals. So Chanimals, every single time, he's holding on to his Mortal Coil as he gets out of the open. Then he counterfears them with that Mortal Coil onto both Mez and Trill. Good pressure here from Method Orange as they charge forward, potentially trying to take Chanimals down. But he still has the Dark Soul available, the Unending Resolve. 
Methyl Orange has to be careful because every moment they stay in the open makes them susceptible to this damage and crowd control. Reverse magic from Trill on the C2 on that polymorph. Wealthy Man's gonna have to sneak in and land those crowd controls on the C2, especially the Chanimals is the main person under fire. So far, the composition that Super Frogs have crafted has countered the Mana Rift strategy as Cubsy is nowhere near running out of mana. Really what it comes down to is if Chanimals can survive deeper and dampening to a big push, which I think he will be able to. There's no mortal wounds effect, no healing reduction on the side of Method Orange. Maybe I'm just wrong. Chanimals finally just getting destroyed right here on ending resolve on 10% health and still just getting owned. Trill Trinkets to actually just end the game and kill. This is the first time we've really seen him aggressively use that Gladiator's Medallion to stay on target. Method Orange may start to smell blood in the water. See you though, now and a polymorph infernals have landed this could be devastating for mez if he's not able to escape they're not making any significant trades anti-magic shield and dampening isn't that powerful dark soul activated channel is ready to go he kites out of the anti-magic zone if mez follows him he's going to take a huge chaos bolt Channel's trying to fake cast interrupts. If Channel can get this Chaos Bolt off, he's baiting interrupts with fear. No one's falling for the bait. He keeps going for fears. He wants someone to interrupt fear so he can Chaos Bolt, but no one's falling for it. CD gets reversed out of the poly. Mez still dips low. Icebound Fortitude exchanges. It may be enough for him to stabilize. Mana suddenly not looking good for either side. Yeah, Channel's getting lower as well. Things are looking great for Method Orange. Spirit Link Totem gets traded out. Darkness, the last line of defense for Trill. Method Orange, this is their final stage. They have to take Chanimals down. If they retreat at this point in the game, there is nothing left. But Mez running away. Chaos Bolt connects. Rhea Frost being channeled out by Wealthy Man. What are you going to do, Mez? As Chanimal gets gripped behind the pillar, he makes his way to his gateway. Gates out into the open. Sidu now caught into a polymorph, into another one. Cubsy has to play catch up. He does have his Innervate up. Iron Bark almost available. He's going to have to be trading that out. Imprisonment by Trill. Good crowd control here from Method Orange. Chanimal still low. This is critical for both teams. Mez trying to find some more damage, but Method Orange, if they stay in the open for too long, Wealthy Man's going to be able to really punish them. Trill's going to have to decide when to use Darkness to just push them over. He's not going to be able to reliably use that for defense. It needs to be offense, but if he makes the wrong timing on it and doesn't get the kill, then they lose out on that immunity and, and probably die. So very risky decision deep into dampening for Method Orange, but at some point they're going to have to make that decision. Otherwise, Channel might be able to close the game out. Triple Shadow Fury sets Wealthy Man up. Troll reverses it, fortunately, for c to get out of crowd control. Cubsy's to or sorry, c totally tapped on mana. Cubsy is sat and drank to full. Super Frogs have the advantage in that regard, but I think it's pressure and momentum that Method Orange could have in on their side. No Infernals for 58, no Icy Veins for 54. I wouldn't even be surprised to see the Super Frogs try and just abandon the push and wait for those offensive cooldowns to have some sort of counter-aggression. Another ward to deny the incoming Gliders Maledic. See, Mez finally being pressured. Cedar doesn't have any more mana left, and maybe the Super Frogs can do it. I mean, it's been looking like it's going their way the entire game. Definitely wouldn't count them out yet. Mez Lowy has the Anti-Magic Shell in two seconds. Anti-Magic Zone, is he going to trade it out? Very greedy plays there by Mez. Wealthy Man almost 25 seconds left on that Icy Bane. That's a deadly cooldown. He will be able to take Method Orange down with. Now c caught into the Polymorph. All three members just teeing off on Mez, who's stuck. He's trying to counter pressure Chanimals, but there's no healing left for Mez. Darkness gets dropped out. c completely tapped on mana. They shred through that anti-magic shell, and Mez having to retreat. This is looking horrible for Method Orange. This is looking abysmal at this point, with Icy Veins now available. Infernal's now available. No mana left for c Pinned at the pillar with the Vortex. Chanimal sets up for the kill. Huge potential damage. This next Chaos Bolt is going to be the end of the game if Chanimal can get it. He might not even need it. Mind Freeze denies it. How many more interrupts do they have? They don't even need it. Wealthy Man's gonna close it out. Super Frogs craft the composition to deny this stalps. In my opinion, that should be Trill and Windwalker. They can sit back and they can do what we basically saw over in Europe when we saw the cleave kind of wait out a little bit in wildcard gaming and then do those big pushes onto the Warlock, force out the unending resolve, and eventually take him down. Very important to be thinking about, though, here, folks. It's only game two of our best of seven in the grand finals of cup number four for North America. If we see Sam I Am on this Moonkin be the X Factor that can net Method Orange a win, all of a sudden, their prospects for this series look a lot better. If we see the Moon King get defeathered, it may be a scary series for Method Orange. Yeah, Method Orange might just get completely destroyed here by the Super Frogs. Completely plucked. 
completely plucked indeed. CD Polymorph, Samurai Immortal Coil away. Wealthy Man setting up burst off the back of it. Getting Solar Beam now on the follow up crowd control. Samurai M Solar Beams are going to be more about disruption when facing a Restoration Druid team, much less about stopping healing. So he will either be using them on Polymorphs or Fears. Chaos Bolts or Ebon Bolts likely in that position. He used it on a Polymorph while Sidu was still in one to deny the follow-up and break the chain. So good usage of Solar Beam in that point of his, as an example. Sidu is still crowd controlled. Sam I am ducking in bear form and that is the one advantage that the Balanced Druid brings to the meta as he reduces magic damage on himself significantly when in bear form. So Sam I am will have that edge. The map sets themselves up well, but Cubsy has so far been able to avoid a lot of mana rifts just by running away from Trill throughout. And I'm very curious to see as this plays out how well they can keep Trill off of Cubsy. Well, it's just all about Wealthy Man and Chanimals rotating their polymorphs in fear. When Wealthy Man gets a polymorph on Trill, Chanimals lands a fear onto Sidu, and that way he can't dispel them. And they just rotate through those in reverse. When Chanimals fears Trill, that's when Wealthy Man goes for polymorphs on Sidu. It becomes difficult for Method Orange to really shut down all of that. Although I must say, so far Cubsy's mana is falling a little bit behind. This is looking a lot better for Method Orange. Sidu has a massive mana lead, but Sam I Am has to be careful. He's going to be able to tank out a lot of this damage in bear form if he really needs to. Wealthy Man and Shanimals once again just teeing off. Sidu into a polymorph as they look to push in and potentially take Sam I Am down, but I think it's unlikely at this point with the pillar line of sighting that safety net will ultimately keep Method Orange alive. The thing is, Sam I Am does not have Death Strike, so Sidu will have to cast a lot more heals, which is very scary when facing Shanimal and Wealthy Man with Spell Lock and Counter Spell available. Trill getting a triple stun. Definitely a mistake on part of the Super Frogs to stack up for that. However, Method Orange are developing a mana lead, which they weren't able to do in game number one. And if that is their main point of strategy, it will work on these small maps. But let's say the Super Frogs lose this. We're going to Tolveron. I don't think the same is true on Tolveron. We've seen that matchup play out in the past between these two teams. And at that point, Method Orange are going to, I think, need a different strategy than just mana rift. Potentially. I mean, it's got them this far, right? Now, Cubsy down around 30% mana already. Method Orange is looking really good. Trill has had such high uptime on Cubsy. I think all three members have been doing a great job pushing in. Sam I Am really has to get counter pressure here. Potentially even like to see a swap onto Sidu. If they can manage to land a bash on Sidu when he's midfield into a coil, maybe they could take him down. But Sam I Am forced so defensive in this matchup. Unfortunately, Trill also getting feared up. Maybe Cubsy sitting down for a drink. If he can recover all that mana, this huge lead Method Orange had is going to be completely lost. But unfortunately for Cubsy, Sam I Am finds him, gets him out of stealth, and they secure their mana lead. Good moves by Sam I Am. That is the only thing really going in favor of Method Orange is that mana lead, and they need to make sure they keep it. Sam I Am out in midfield. Could be a bit dangerous. He's popping Incarnation. He's trying to go for a kill, and Cubsy's going to be the kill target as they go oh. for an all-in burst <laughs> attempt. Multiple Gladiators Maledicts connect. Cubsy manages to escape, but for how much longer? Sidu's purging him. He's desperately trying to take him down. Ursul's Vortex pulls Sidu downstairs out of line of sight. Now trying to get back up. Cubsy ducks around the corner, but his mana, just look at it. It's not there anymore, Ven. Yeah, it's disappeared from the arena. Hopefully he can cover, or hopefully for Super Frogs, he can recover some of it, but Trill and Hot Pursuit, like we said, Demon Hunters right now, they're mostly hunting mana bars, not demons. And that seems to be the case in this matchup as Cubsy's getting lower and lower. See, you actually, like like you kind of mentioned, even throwing in some offensive purges during those moments of burst for their team. And I actually really like that. He has such a mana, massive mana lead that he can really force Cubsy to fall behind. Uh, I just think on this map, maybe the Super Frog should play more aggressive rather than trying to avoid the fight. Just try and kill Sam. I am... I I'm not sure what else they can really do. I think Cubsy is just running laps on the outskirts of the map while Trill and Sam I am chase him down to just mash out as many mana rifts as possible and then dampening will overwhelm Cubsy where he can't heal anymore. To be fair, they need that situation to be able to do enough damage to really get through Super Frogs. So Method Orange are just playing for a safe win condition later into the match and it's really up to Cubsy to find some way to sneak off and regenerate mana if he wants to keep his team in a good position. But winning that blind pick, winning in the Grand Arena fight was important for the rest of the series. So they'll have that swing match advantage and they can always bring it to an open quarters, large map if they need to, should Method Orange continue this composition.
Yep, Pubsy with the last little bit of his mana. What is he gonna do? Looking for a re-stealth here. Can Trill find him? There's a polymorph. Sam I am getting bursted down. It's danger time for Method Orange. Sidu caught into a full fear. No tremor totem, but unfortunately it breaks. Now Channel's looking for a chaos bolt on Sam I am. I see uh, ducks out of line of sight. We'll be able to survive for now, and that's one of the main advantages of this map as well. If Sam I am can use these little pillars to escape in bear form with Sidu, it's unlikely he goes down. But in midfield like this, he's very exposed to wealthy man and channel's damage, so definitely going to be have to, uh, gonna have to be careful. Uh, Sam I'm just walking back in the line of sight, and his fire safeguard is going to get procced. Definitely needs to work on avoiding being attacked. Manages to re-stealth, sneaking across to stop Cubsy from drinking. Mana, though, in Dampany is surprisingly equaling out. Uh, the counter pressure from Chanimo has been very effective at creating windows of opportunity to potentially kill Sam I Am, and I do expect him to be the main target at least for another 10 or 15% dampening. Perhaps they go after Trill at that point when his self sustainability is reduced. Wealthy Man gets denied on crowd control by Sam I Am. Chanimo is cycloned up. Sam I Am still just chasing Cubsy. Do we have a lap counter at this point? Yep. Uh, 42. 42? I, I had 71, but... Who's right? Not me, probably, because I'm just guessing. But we'll have to see. It's pretty much pretty much doubled what I did. <laughs> well, Sam, I am still under fire here. Cubsy has managed to hold on to his mana. At one point in the game, he did manage to sneak away for a little bit of a drink, covering some of that mana he's lost once again in stealth. If Chanimals can land a fear, unfortunately not able to find it in time on Sam I Am. That would have been huge for Cubsy. Uh -oh. Now Sidu caught into a polymorph. <laughs> Sam I Am all alone. Yikes. Wealthy man looking to close it out. Reverse magic coming into the nick of time from Trill, allowing Sidu to get off the Spirit Link totem. What a scary moment for Method Orange. Super Frog still battling it out valiantly. The thing is, on the small maps, Cubsy will lose on mana, but I think they can just win on damage by just crushing Sam I Am. So. Even though Cubsy is completely tapped, I think Super Frogs still have an opportunity at victory with Infernals 50 seconds away, Icy Veins a minute and 20. That's going to be a big hit combo to take out Sam I Am if he's not careful. Cubsy using that wild charge to get advantage of the Z-axis. Of course, Trill as a Demon Hunter doesn't really care. He just presses space bar twice, and he's back up to the second level immediately. Well, the man catches Sam I Am in a stun out of form. He really needs to be in bear form for those big hits like that flurry. Oh, Sam, no. I am, Sam I Am is throwing. He's in a lot of trouble with the bash on the c -Doo. Sam I Am so low in this situation. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped by c -Doo. Will Sam I Am be able to hold on? Fear from Channimals. Full polymorph secured by Wealthy Man. Sam I Am still out of line of sight. Gladiator safeguard and Barkskin keeps him alive. But what a scary moment. And it is close. Oh, the Nether Ward. After close call. Beautiful Nether Ward from Channimals. He is Whoa. not letting Sam I Am out of this. Oh, he's. That was so lucky for Sam I Am to get feared into the box. So Channimals couldn't finish the Chaos Bolt. That might have actually killed him if Channimals was able to get that. He's still looking for. Sam I Am is just tanking all these hits out of Bear. Form. He has no reason not to be in bear form on Balance Druid in this position. He's just taking huge hits for no reason. Sidu has to trade the Ascendance, the Healing Tide Totem, to try and recover. I think Cubsy, amidst all this chaos, has managed to drink. We're about to find out. Sam I Am is still not topped off. This is looking abysmal. They set up for the kill off the back of the Shadow Fury, and Sam I Am gets totaled. Oh, man, we are just going to see him absolutely defend. Druid or Mistweaver more. It seems like Shaman is really his most confident, so they're gonna rely on comfort, but sometimes you need to embrace discomfort to overcome adversity. I mean, yeah, true words have really never been spoken, Sid. So. Super Frog's gonna be leading in this series two to zero. It is not match point though. We are in the grand final for North America. This one is going to be a best of seven. So if Super Frog's take this, they are on match point and getting very close to send Method Orange that second place condolence prize. So I'm wondering if Method Orange are going to take the same strategy as Wildcard Gaming and play at the pillar, wait for dampening and then overwhelm the destruction warlock. It seems like that is what they are trying to do. But as Zico already pointed out in the pregame, is that these pillars are quite small, which means they'll have to reposition to other points of line of sight. And while they reposition, they're out in the open and they take huge hits. Wealthy Man is closing in. And I don't think playing at the wall is going to be the best spot. They're all stacked up. 
know, they're all stacked up eating that blizzard, and this is the kind of triangle formation we talked about. Channimals in position to throw out some damage. Wealthy man in position to throw out some damage, and if Method Orange just sits here passively, eventually Super Frogs will be able to find a kill opportunity potentially. Sidu now into a polymorph. Wealthy man finds another one. Trill out of line of sight, just healing himself up. One Maledict connects on him. Could he be in some trouble? Don't think so. Mez is going to shut down some of that damage, some of that kill attempt on Channimals by gripping him in. Gets the asphyxiate. Trill ports over, looking for some pressure as well. Cubsy looking to deny, using his innervate so he can cast out all of those really expensive heals like the efflorescence in order to keep Channimals alive. Yeah, let's see if he can do it. So far, without that mana rift, Method Orange are going to have to rely on prow control, coordination, and burst to take down the super frogs. Right now, we haven't seen any real aggressive pushes on their side. They've been mostly just focused on trying to line of sight and avoid the combat. Now getting caught midfield. Huge burst. Ursul's Vortex pulls Trill back into line of sight. Wealthy Man blinks in to try and KO. Touch of Karma will allow Trill to survive, but a close call early on. I actually feel like this map is kind of backfiring. These pillars aren't nearly enough for Method Orange to implement the strategy they really want, which is run, hide, wait till dampening, and with these small pillars, there's always someone in line of sight for Channimals or Wealthy Man to try to exploit. So far, Wealthy Man is doing a great job making sure he's not overstaying his welcome. He gets out the damage that he needs. Trill and Mez now going to be moving in, but with CD locked out, Trill and Mez could potentially be vulnerable. Channimals realizes this. He drops out the Infernals looking for some damage, and Method Orange forced a retreat. All right, Method Orange once again pinned at the pillar. Channimal connects with Bolt. I would like to see Wealthy Man and Channel split up. They're both in the same position currently and both moving in the same direction, which means that Method Orange can all just shift at the same time in the opposite and avoid them entirely. It's a little bit of a mistake on positioning here from Channel and Wealthy Man, although with the pillar so small that Frozen Orb is basically covering the entire side of it. Wealthy Man gets gripped into the fight. Channel supports with a double stun, denying the reconnect as Wealthy Man blinks back in the center field into safety. We do see the Dark Simulacrum selected for Mez. He can steal crowd control, something like a Polymorph or a Fear, and then use that on the enemy healer Cubsy to extend crowd control and burst somebody down. I'm very curious to see what he is able to get done with that honor talent moving forward. Yeah, we'll have to definitely see what happens. Cubsy in a great position to just once again go down, sit for a drink. That's not orange. I don't think they care at this point. I think what they really want to do in this matchup is find a window of opportunity where they can really overwhelm Channimals by using a lot of those offensive cooldowns, potentially pull out the unending resolve. And if they can do that, it's definitely a big lead. They get Iron Bark. They get uh, the unending resolve as well from Channimals. Now Mez and Trail, they're pushing forward. Mez managed to use the Dark Simulacrum. Didn't steal anything just yet. Polymorph on a Sea-Doo. I think Mez might have actually taken a Polymorph, so Cubsy needs to be a little bit careful of that. He does manage to get that. That's going to be extra crowd control for Method Orange that they need to take uh, down to Animals. Yeah, Super Frogs 2-0 up in the lead of this grand final, setting themselves up quite well to just secure victory overall when facing down Method Orange. Cubsy pinned down behind the pillar with that Ring of Peace, well positioned by Trill, but Mez is the one still under fire. With Wealthy Man and Channimal on these double spellcasters, if you leave one of them open, they will create momentum and swing the game in their favor. Channimal repositioning to the right side. Wealthy Man free casting. Channimal trying to fake cast some interrupts. Baits one with the Shadow Fury. Finds a Chaos Bolt on Trill. Sidu and a Polymorph. Big mistakes here by Method Orange. Getting caught in crowd control and tons of damage. They can't afford these slip ups. Yeah, Trill low. He's already used to defuse magic. He has Touch of Karma. Danger time. He manages to connect some heals as Mez and, or sorry, Trill and CD line of sighting. Mez trying to push in aggressive in the matchup, trying to keep some pressure for his team, but forced to retreat over to Mr. Outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that guy is too hilarious in this arena. Mez gets bursted down to half. CD recovers. <laughs> Actually caught in, they can't afford to get caught in these polymorphs. The, the one downside of this small map as well is that Wealthy Man can start a polymorph, blink fully in the line of sight, and secure crowd control. Now even attacking Sidu, but Sidu effectively utilizing that pack spirit, recovering in Ghost Wolf effectively for free. No mana advantage establishing itself on either side. Channimal, however, his defense is limited. No one didn't resolve for another minute, potentially. <laughs> it's it's so loud. Like that. Yeah, we need Wealthy Man's positioning. Get away from that guy as soon as possible. There's a stun onto Channimal. He's incapacitate over onto Cubsy. Caught into a stun as well. He does have his trinket and iron bark available if he needs it. Channimal's going to be feeling quite healthy. 
But like we've kind of seen in these matchups before, it's all about the Windwalker Monk and the Death Knight extending it long enough where their cooldowns are desynced with some of the defensives that Channels really has available. And then that's what we're about to see. Trill with this touch of death coming up in two seconds. That's a great opportunity for them to get some damage rolling on Channels and potentially find a kill in this matchup. Yeah, let's see if they can get it done. They got another 30 seconds on that clock to try and take down Channel, but they're going after Sidu. They got him out in midfield. Mez saves the day with that anti-magic zone, but it only trades for the Infernals. There's still two big threats, Dark Soul and Icy Veins, which could be popped at any moment. Mez is still exposed. Multiple interrupts already used. Channel connects a Chaos Bolt. Ultiman secures a Polymorph. Great initiation, but Mez steals it and secures a polymorph of his own. Six seconds away from that unending resolve. Cubsy needs to pray that Iron Bark will be enough, and it does appear to be the case. In the meantime, Sidu is just eating crowd control like candy. Mez is going to go down as a result, and Super Frogs advance to match point. Candy ain't good for you. Mez is going to be torn out. It looks like the Super Frogs may be able to just close this one out. Method Orange, their last hope, going to be Trill on that Monk. Will they be able to find some semblance of pressure? Will they be able to find a win? Or are they going to find themselves stuck in second place? We are about to find out as they are on match point. Super Frogs look to secure victory and establish dominance in the North American region. They will be passing the boys in points. They've secured their spot at the spring finals already, even without this victory. But of course, accumulating as many points as possible to potentially qualify off of them to the world finals is of utmost importance. And Super Frogs look likely to take it unless Method Orange can reverse sweep. Method Orange have to win four matches in a row. Three of them, they will be at a map pick and a comp pick disadvantage that is a tall order to take yeah definitely and looking at trill's talent choices he is going with the tiger eye brew so he's going to be able to build that up and every time he activates it gives them a few seconds of where his damage turns into magic damage and he can really shred through a lot of the armor that channels has available to him a lot of that defense so that gives me the clue or sort of suggests to me that channels will be the main target in this matchup I think Method Orange is really going to have to pick their moment to push in. Trill right now with no Transcendence and no Touch of Karma, going to be feeling very vulnerable. And I, I don't really see Channels going down in this matchup until much later on in Dampening. Yeah, most certainly Dampening going to be required. It's a matter of if Method Orange can actually make it to that point. They're already getting bursted down through multiple defensive options early on. Finding some momentum here on Channel. Person down to half immediately healed back to full health. Must have been a huge swift mend by Channel. Dark Soul Icy Veins available, and I'm really trying to pay attention to how the Super Frogs place their offensive cooldowns because they're really the only team we see playing this composition and only ones actually able to make it work. And I think it is offensive cooldown management. They lead with Infernals, they try and bait some cooldowns, then they split it up. Oh, a stolen Polymorph by Mez could turn this game on its head. Well done. Managing to keep his team in the fight, forcing that Gladiator's Medallion and Iron Park. A mistake like that later on the game definitely will cost the Super Frogs. Yep. Trill portals away behind the pillar, uses his Transcendence, but he's left Mez in the midfield, who instantly recovers his health with a Death Strike. Good burst damage from Wealthy Man, but unfortunately Mez, with his self-healing, will be able to re recover quite quickly. Now Trill moving in with a touch of death. Full Polymorph stolen once again. Channels could actually go down off the back of that stolen Polymorph from Mez. Nice ring of peace onto Channels, keeping him far away from his healer. Asphyxiate's done, now onto Cubsy as Mez continues the crowd control chain, but just not enough damage there. Channels manages to survive, but they did pull out that unending resolve, that major defensive cooldown Channels has available. Yeah, these Dark Simulacrums on Mez are carrying the team. Mez really putting his team on his shoulders here on their on match point. Can Mez do it? Can he keep his team alive in the tournament? They have to win four games in a row against the Super Frogs. It'll be on Super Frogs territory as well for the rest of the series, even if they should go down here and now. It is getting a bit scary. Mez activating the Dark Simulacrum. Let's we'll see if he managed to steal anything. I don't think he did, or he would have already have exchanged it since they are so far ahead in terms of pressure. Cubsy repositioning to the opposite side of the map. Sidu looking like he wanted to cross and maybe deny him from drinking. Not able to do so. Mana not looking that good for Sidu. Things overall, cooldown-wise, are in favor of Method Orange, but the mana lead is establishing itself. And yeah, definitely Trill still in the fight, pushing forward onto Channel. 
not opting to run away or commit any defensive cooldowns just yet. Cubsy still ahead on mana, like you kind of mentioned. Full polymorph now onto CD. Trill could be in some trouble or at least have to use some defensives. Animals does get interrupted. Another polymorph secured by Wealthy Man as he's looking to just free up Animals. He's trying to find some counter pressure to force Trill and Mez to back off just a little bit, but so far it hasn't been enough. So he pulls the trigger with the icy veins, looking to get hyper aggressive here onto Method Orange. Is he going to be able to do it? I'm not sure. Channel's doing his best to just close this series out. If he can connect some Chaos Bolts during this infernal timing, it would be devastating. All three members getting cleaved apart. Sinu getting destroyed. Spearling Totem exchanged to recover. You cannot disrespect the Super Frog's damage, most certainly. And Channels is really just leading the charge, trying to close this game out here and now. Multiple Maledicts flying in. Sinu ducking around the corner, recovering, but now they can switch their attention to Mez and Trill. I do not think they can afford to stack up an, a frozen orb in the near future. Otherwise, it's likely to be the end of the tournament for them. Yeah, Cubsy did sit down, managed to get a whole bunch of mana back. He also had the icy, or sorry, the iron bark and thorns in order to keep Channels alive. But Trill, with every single defensive and offensive cooldown available, Method Orange, they still have it in them to push through. If they can get the iron bark, Channels with no unending un resolve for another 35 seconds is still very vulnerable, caught in midfield. Wealthy Man still trying to build some pressure. Cubsy gets gripped in into an asphyxiate as Channels gr uh, ports away. He wants to make sure he mm. is away from Cubsy. Trill getting caught into the mortal coil. A lot of damage on him. Forced to use the touch of Karma. Polymorph on Sidu. Method Orange now very vulnerable, but this all-in attempt on Channels could cost him the game. There's the Iron Bar committed by Cubsy. He needs to play catch-up at this point, using the Nether Ward to redirect those Gladiators' Maledicts. Very nicely done. Mez manages to find one, but Cubsy with a dispel and heals easily deflects. Ooh, Mez stole a fear, putting that on Cubsy, trying to get an any resolve, but it's Trill on the back foot as a polymorph is secured. Ray of Frost could just close the game out. Trill max ranges, ducks around the corner. Mez now left behind. Chanimal trying to stun him. He actually stuns up Sidu. Are they going to follow it up? No, instead attacking Sidu, just hitting whoever's out in the open, looking for a Chaos Bolt. That's at least going to cost Sidu potentially some mana. Big hit. Mez and Trill, they jump back into the fight while Sidu is still recovering. That can't be the right maneuver. Mez instead just tanking some hits with that Death Strike recovers. Good pre-tremor on that fear by Sidu, breaking the crowd control. Chanimal is still just trying to go for an attack. Nether Ward to immune and interrupt. Gets a fear, but not onto Sidu. Frozen Orb down. Ring of Peace knocks Chanimal maybe out of line of sight. Able to sneak back in before the stun was secured. Nourish from Cubsy should be more than enough to stabilize. They've got a huge mana lead with Dampening just moving in. They've had way more burst opportunities and way more kill windows than Method Orange. This game is much so in favor of Super Frogs, and that's not looking good when you're on match point. Drill activates the Diffuse Magic to remove one of the Gladiator's Maledicts. Another one comes flying in. Sidu dispels it. Sidu's mana not doing great. Mez caught in midfield. Has to get to line of sight as soon as possible, but all three members of Super Frogs chucking in damage as much as they can. Drill with Touch of Karma might be feeling a little bit safe, but this is not the best position for Method Orange to be in. Channels has recovered on any resolve. He's looking good. If Method Orange has to fully retreat, that's not the spot you want to be. Sidu's unlikely to be able to ever drink in this matchup, whereas Cubsy, if he has to sneak away and get a reset, he's going to be feeling completely fine. Oh. Still getting low. A lot of burst damage coming in off the back of those Infernals from Channel. They want to close out oh. this game. Mortal Coil on Mez. He deflects with the anti-magic shell. Sidu trying to recover with his ascendance as all three members of Method Orange run and hide. They managed to recover with Ascendance, but for how much longer? They have to retreat around, along the outskirts of this balcony. Earthen Wall Totem now placed down. That's going to keep Sidu's team nice and cozy, but they stack up for a double stun. Well-timed leg sweep by Trill. Maybe an opportunity to get back in the fight. Grounding Totem on the Chaos Bolt. Good denial by Sidu, but his mana is looking terrible. Cubsy's back to full. The late game fully in favor of the Super Frogs at this point. They've had way more burst opportunities. Everything is swinging in their fortune. Double Shadow Fury Fear to set up. Wealthy Man tries to sneak a poly. Sidu shuts him down. Sidu definitely on point in this game in terms of denial. He's going to have to make zero mistakes if he wants to have a chance at staying in this tournament. Yeah, definitely. Mez in a little bit of trouble as well. Channel's looking for a Chaos Bolt. Unable to find it just yet. Spear Hand Strike coming in from Trill immediately interrupting that spell. Now, once again, Cubsy, he can sit down for a drink. It's unlikely Sidu will ever be able to do that. Super Frog's looking very healthy with the amount of defensive cooldowns that they have. Infernal's coming off the cooldown shortly. Wealthy Man with the icy veins as well, almost up. Wealthy Man moves in, find, trying to find some damage. Chanimals gets gripped in by Mez and Trill. 
Can they force out anything here? They don't really have too many offensive cooldowns to really force Chanimal's defensive. He's just going to be moving in, looking for fears, looking for damage. Wealthy Man backing him up, finds oh. the polymorph on Sidu. Choke could be in a lot of trouble as Super Frog's looking to close out this game. Mez denies the follow up. Good disruption on the side of Method Orange, but their mana is still not looking too good. Dampening is ramping up. They need to get some work done. Cubsy gets gripped in. He pre-bear forms it. He's not going to be a target to swap to. They're going to have to go after Chanimal, but even still not denting his health whatsoever. Dampening is just going to get higher and higher. Sidu's mana I don't think is ever going to... Maybe he can sit down and go for a drink. He's been standing in one spot for some time. Oh, he's, he's, getting get, he's getting it. Yeah, a lot of mana recovered by Sidu, but maybe at the expense of Mez's life. Mez comes back in the nick of time in order for CD to actually get some heals on him. Cubsy sitting down for a drink, realizing they're behind on mana. He needs to be able to recover a little bit. Method Orange, great strategy, gripping in Chanimals. Ring of Peace denies his exit route as well. Chanimals kind of stuck in this position. A lot of burst damage available for Method Orange as well. What is Chanimals going to do? Cubsy deflecting some of that with the Thorns, forcing Method Orange to back off just a little bit. At 28% damage, you have to try to avoid as much damage as possible. Yeah, you most certainly do. Dealing damage is way more important in dampening, and avoiding damage is way more important. You can't just soak the hits at this critical mass. Sidu gets the drink. His denial has been good here in game number four at breaking up crowd control and burst, but now they need to try and coordinate together aggressively to create some pressure. The Dark Simulacrums earlier on by Mez were game-breaking, but at this point, they're basically meaningless. He needs to try and get some snipes on crowd control if he wants to carry the team. Trading that anti-magic shield, soaking a huge hit from Chanimal, but look at those cooldowns. Infernals, Icy Veins, Dark Soul, those are big hitting spells for the Super Frogs, and they're all ready and available at any moment. Super Frogs can engage. Infernals have landed. Huge flurry comboed right at the same time. A grounding totem from Sidu denies it, but the Maledix are flying in. Mez is in trouble. He's trying to hide, but the Spear Link totem whiffs. Huge mistake on the side of Method Orange. Perhaps they recover, but it's going to be so difficult at this point. Yeah, no Spear Link totem to fall back on. No anti-magic zone either. Super Frog's looking really good in this position. Method Orange trying to recover at all costs. That was the Icy Veins of Wealthy Man. They managed to weather that storm, but still, this free cast of damage from Super Frogs is just so strong, and the crowd control they're putting out is just excellent. he has been having a really difficult time finding the dispels he really needs. Trill gets dispelled out of a polymorph. Now he's into a full fear. Guess what? Seed only has one dispel. And that control really limits Method Orange's damage potential. Yeah, I mean, now with no Spearling Totem, no Anti-Magic Zone, it's do or die. Chanimal respecting Trill's pressure here, trading his unending resolve for the touch of death. And I'm wondering if that means Chanimal wants to get aggressive and in the face and just kill Method Orange here and now. They've got a lot of points on the board that they can even just afford to throw away. I wouldn't put it past them to get aggressive. If they were watching the European region, they would have seen the Windwalker Death Knight run the Destruction Warlock over in Deep Dampening. So I do think that Chanimal needs to look to end the game if they can't secure a mana advantage. But now Chanimal is falling behind. Cubsy is really struggling struggling at 41% dampening, but Trill is giving up. He's going to retreat away. That allows Cubsy. No, they're going to grip Chanimal out of line of sight. Cubsy repositions. Wealthy Man drops a triple frozen orb. There's no earthen wall totem for five more seconds. How is Sidu going to deal with the pressure? Mez is just going to try and Dark Simula come from some crowd control. What did he end up getting? I don't think anything. Sidu's totally tapped. He's rotted down. How's he going to recover? Chanimal being pressured. It's anyone's match at this point. Definitely. Sidu now almost completely tapped on mana. Wonder if he even threw in some purges at that point at 43% dampening. Mez is going to be feeling very scared. Anti magic shell denies that kill, denies that chaos bolt, but Wealthy Man pushes in. He gets the full polymorph secured on Sidu. Chanimal's looking for a shadow fear. Do they have the damage? Mez trinkets out. He's trying to run and hide, but Sidu in a fear. There's no backup for Mez. Drill trying to find some counter pressure, but Wealthy Man controls him up. Cubsy in a great position to keep his team alive. And seriously, Method Orange, they are falling behind. Super. Frogs are looking to 4-0. Method Orange's Mez is just getting destroyed by the damage. Anti-Magic Zone, but a full Polymorph sneaks its way through. Mez at 50% dampening. Can't rely on Death Strike. If Wealthy Man keeps the chain going, they can't. They get denied. Cedar's free. He's trying to connect a couple Riptides, but there's multiple interrupts that he needs to deal with. He's trying to fake cast the Fell Hunter. Can Cedar fake cast through the interrupts at 50% dampening? I'm not so certain. Chanimal trying to reposition. They've got the triangle. Wealthy Man blinks in to close the game. Huge damage from Wealthy Man. Even if Chanimal doesn't get pressure outs, Wealthy Man might solo him. Dark Simulacrum. Did he steal the polymorph? 
This is now the question. Can Mez somehow carry the team off the back of that? Can the kill? Huge damage. Mez swings it back and manages to take down Jan oh. Hall. Method Orange stay in the tournament. Method Orange stay in the tournament. Jan Hall, welcome to Trailville. We thought that it was... Oh. In starts, we were already saying they were one of the top teams in North America. We were just waiting for that jump. Snuts on this roster has made them one of the, the nuttiest teams that we have ever seen and now they're looking for another win in a grand final Tolveron could be the place that they do it and yeah, super frogs in the past they were kind of a one-trick pony really relying on the shaman warlock either windwalker or the assassination road and they were still taking down top tier teams consistently even when it seemed like they were compositionally disadvantaged now with snuts like you said they just have so many different options seems like they always have an answer with the different compositions they have available and they're still playing those comps at that very high tier level you have to imagine how much endurance it takes to play out this grand final method orange need to win three games in a row any mistake will be punished mez gets stunned up in midfield dispelled mind controlled ring of peace breaks up that mind control good reaction by trill it does appear to be the case that method orange are staying at the pillar Avoiding the damage, maybe looking for a death grip stun combo, but Snuts and Wealthy Man, look at their positioning. Snuts on the right, Wealthy Man on the left, at least one of them can cast. They need to reposition. Snuts gripped into a stun. Crowd control on Cubsy. Good initiation by Method Orange. What can they bank off the back of it? Not even a dispersion. Unfortunate for Method Orange. Yeah, unfortunate for Method Orange, but those Restoration Druid heal over time effects are going to be very powerful. Sidu caught in midfield with Relentless. A swap like this later on could be devastating for Sidu, especially with all those Maledic Trinkets. If Super Frog is able to hold on to all three of those and use them on Sidu with the Psychic Horror into a Silence, that could definitely be devastating for Method Orange. Yeah, most certainly. I mean, he's still far behind, at least with Ascendance and Pack Spirit in Ghost Wolf. Sidhu can avoid being interrupted or silenced, stabilize the team with spending no mana. So good usage of cooldowns there on Sidhu's part to recover basically for free. Vampiric Embrace, well-timed with Void Form. This allows Snuts to easily heal up his team with Void Bolt, an ability only have access in Void Form. Maledict, Trill ports away from it. Sidhu dispels, but again, this is also a benefit of the Shadow Priest over the Warlock is Vampiric Touch, which is applied to the target. And if it's dispelled, then the person who dispels it is horrified for three seconds. You want to dispel the Gladiator's Mal Maledict Healing Absorb, but then you'll eat three seconds of crowd control, which could snowball the game further if you're horrified out in the midfield for the Mage to Polymorph. Yeah, no question about it. And I just think Shadow Priest Frost Mage, it has a lot of synergy, the way the damage works. Wealthy Man is going to provide a lot of snares and burst damage on that Frost Mage. Snuts a lot of consistent pressure on that Shadow Priest. They have a lot of instant crowd control as well. Snuts can set up a Polymorph for Wealthy Man with that Psychic Horror Stun, opting to use it now on Trill with a Silence on Sidhu. It means he can't dispel Trill, but Trill should be able to survive. He's in midfield. Method Orange looking to make a push on Snuts, but Snuts able to fade across the map, gets gripped back in by Mez. Now Snuts could actually be semi-vulnerable in this situation. Could actually be forced into the dispersion as well because he really doesn't have the iron bark he needs to catch back up but still manages to do so at the expense of a lot of mana now going into cat form potentially looking for a drink and he will be resetting his mana. Drinking will be very easy for Cubsy on this map because Method Orange don't have mana rift and they don't really have a good way of crossing big distances to stop Cubsy. So Super Frogs can secure a late game advantage with mana in that regard. And then later in dampening, Vampiric Touch will start overwhelming Frozen Orb as well. And this is the advantages of taking the Shadow Priest. And you also get defensive advantages is that Dispersion is just available more often than Unending Resolve and almost certainly guaranteed that you will survive on like an ending resolve. Wealthy Man is more likely to be the target for the team of Method Orange as they grip him into the fight. Life grip and blink, a bit of an overlap. Definitely a mistake on the part of the Super Frogs there. Not a major one, but potentially maybe showing some signs of weakness. Yeah, definitely. There's the Frozen Orb and Blizzard once again dropped out on CD Mesotril. They can easily heal through that damage at this point in the game, but later on, we always kind of talk about once that self-healing goes, once CD's he healing is limited, that AoE damage from the Frost Mage from Wealthy Man starts becoming very significant when paired, especially with that Shadow Priest. You can look at Snuts, and if you see little ghosts on the field, that's what Snuts is really focusing a lot of his damage on. Every, anytime he gets a Shadow Word Pain crit, I believe he sends out a uh, Spirit, and that Spirit does additional damage, and most of his Azerite traits, gearing, and talents are focused around that build just to give him a little bit more instant damage.
Yep, good addition by Snuts, realizing that the enemy team will be line of sighting most of the fight, so trying to get access to more instant cast damage, some more spread pressure, so that deeper in Dampany he can overwhelm the opposing team. Cubsy just constantly looking for drinks. I, I do want to check if Cubsy is running that Feral Affinity. It could be risky if they decide to do an all-in on him, but at the same time, Feral Affinity is so much extra damage. Cubsy actually not running the Feral Affinity, running Balance Affinity. I'm checking if this is correct. Balance Affinity. Yep, that's what he's been playing. I think he just wants the extra range on his spells, makes him way less susceptible to damage, makes it a lot more difficult or for crowd control, makes it a lot more difficult for Mez and Trill to push in. Cubsy can always stay very far away, play very safe as he knows that's really his main win condition. All right, let's see. I, I would like to see them maybe gun down Cubsy deeper into Dampany now, which has advanced into the game with 3% currently. Mana tied. No real significant advantages for either side as we step foot into Dampany territory. Method Orange, everything is on the line here. They're on match point. They will be going into second place if they lose any game at this point. They need to win three in a row if they want to take this and be the champions of the North American Cup number two. They were able to come back today and overcome never lucky they were uh, knocked to the lower bracket by them but now able to come up with better strategies and better play to overcome them i was actually expecting colo to win the tournament today but uh, method orange was able to adjust and overcome it now the super frogs seem to have found a good answer for the strategies that method orange employed with that mana rift basically countered on that destruction warlock frost mage composition allowing cubsy to drink not even sam i am substitute on the balance druid was enough to overthrow it and now moving on to tolveron arena super frogs have even more answers by bringing in snuts on that shadow priest which we've already seen be effective against a team like the boys being able to kill chun li so i'm not sold here on method orange and their ability to make it all the way back they're definitely going to need a lot of energy they haven't gotten any offense going in this game whatsoever and the strategy of running and hiding as long as wealthy man can get on one side of the pillar and snuts can get on the other this damage they're doing is going to end up being really significant and cedar's going to have a really difficult time actually healing through it but for now Method Orange is stabilized. I'm just wondering when they're going to make that all-in offensive push. And is it going to be too little too late? We're already at 12% dampening. Things are starting to fall apart here for Method Orange just a little bit. Wealthy Man gets gripped in. Ring of Peace used by Trill, but unfortunately failed. Wealthy Man can just walk out of that quite easily. Cubsy in a great position to heal. Paralysis was used, but with Wealthy Man kiting away, Snuts is free cast oh. the damage. Silence on the Sea-Doo. Mez could be in some trouble. Icebound Fortitude forced out. Now Method Orange once again is on the run. That's one major objective, and Mez is more and more the target deeper into dampening. So not having that Icebound Fortitude for three minutes is crucial for the Super Frogs to find victory. Cubsy's got him in checkmate. They can't stop him from drinking. If they go to midfield, they'll just fall over and die so this is great map selection great strategy employed by the super frogs method orange need brute force they need the power of zug zug if they're gonna find victory here against the super frogs otherwise they're likely to just be rotted down and wither and fall before the power of snuts is shadow priest I mean that could definitely happen but so far they have managed to stay healthy the only problem is when they grip in wealthy man for these attempts they don't have grip to take him back after he blinks. So Wealthy Man, if he survives the stun, he's able to easily blink away. Good pressure here now on a Mez. Silence on Sidu. Mez in a little bit of trouble. Has to activate the anti-magic shell. Snuts moves in. He's looking for a fear. Super Frogs, they want to close out this game. This is match point for Method Orange. They need to survive. Mez line of sighting should be able to. Sidu in a polymorph. Once again, Sidu, he's playing relentless, so he never has a trinket. Now making a swap. Mez backs him up with the anti-magic zone. Nice grounding totem soaks up one of those gladiators maledicts. Sidu has been doing a great job with that so far in this match, but he has to play catch up. Trill and Mez both rotting down. Yeah, that shadowy apparitions build that Snuts is running is really tearing in. Look at all three targets of Sidu's team just rotting down. Sidu connects a couple of big heals with that Ascendance. It's not even stabilizing Mez though. This is very unfortunate. Sidu was relying on that Ascendance. It's not topping the team. Dampity might be too high. Silent stun combo. This could be it. Mez in trouble. Ducks around the corner. Catches a death strike off that. That Shadow Fiend, good awareness on Mez's part. Healing Tide Totem now burned through, so with Ascendance and Healing Tide out of the way, those are the major healing mechanics the Restoration Shaman can use against the Shadow Priest. He doesn't have those for three more minutes. We're already at 25% dampening, and if I'm Sidu, I'm shaking. I'm definitely shaking. Now Trill caught into a bash. Interrupt on Sidu. Nice counter spell snuck in there by Wealthy Man. Now a Cyclone secured on Sidu. Trill has to run away. Touch of Karma was forced out. Sidu going to have to play catch up. Mez caught in the middle of the map. 
unfortunately looking to run away with that anti-magic shell, but Super Frogs, they're feeling a lot more comfortable in this matchup to push in, get a little bit aggressive. Snuff's not feeling too afraid. He's been moving in, getting fierce, psychic ores, silences, but Method Orange might be able to punish that aggressiveness. Sidu Palmer, Sidu gets burst, or Snuff gets bursted. Fades, lands a psychic scream. Good crowd control. Trill could be in trouble. Dips low, gets Ursula's Vortex back into the fight. Trill's so low on health to magic. The only thing keeping him alive. Spearling totem, but Mezzis Frost Nova to one inch outside of it. They're not gonna get Mezzis health on that. That Frost Nova was perfect. Cubs, or Sidu gets Cyclone, he's still low on health. No big healing cooldowns for another two minutes. Sidu's getting rotted down. Wealthy Man looks to snipe him. Snots is being pressured as well. Definitely blows being exchanged on both sides here, but with three members rotting down. Another minute and 20 seconds on that Ascendance, and Snuts is ready to just close this out. Yeah, Cubsy sitting down for a drink, wants to secure that mana lead. Interrupt on Sidu. Wealthy Mana Snuts move in. Mez and Trill trying to find some pressure here on the Snuts as Method Orange is falling behind. Is Super Frogs going to be able to do it? Claim the third cup out of four in North America. So much pressure, so much damage. Silence on Sidu. Bash on Trill. Trill has no defensive left. He's forced to transcendence away. Now Mez rotting down. Wealthy Mana yeah. slips in, looking to close out the game. Anti-magic zone, but now Sidu, how is he gonna recover his team's health? Snuts is in void form. There is no light at the end of the tunnel for Sidu. This might be a triple kill for the Super Frogs if they can keep their damage going a tad bit longer. Sidu gets polymorphed. Wealth Man looks to carry. Snuts gets bursted suddenly in a surprise attack. Dispersion exchanges. He's gonna survive. Drill now has cooldowns. Mez now has cooldowns. Maybe they can make it out alive. Maybe that polymorph was a mistake. It healed Sidu back to full health for free, and they didn't get a kill with it. Now Sidu is starting to stabilize. 17 more seconds to his ascendance. If he can get a clean reset, Snuts has no Gladiator's Medallion. If he gets bursted in a stun, he's not going to be able to Void Shift. They're 20 seconds until that Iron Bark. Sidu needs to keep him going just a tad bit longer. They stun up Snuts. They burst him. They need a bit more damage than this. Doesn't look like they've got it. Snuts has got that Vampiric Embrace. Silent stun combo. Trill in trouble. His multi man combos out. Trill stays alive for a couple more seconds. Ducks around the corner with that touch of Karma. Holding on by a thread. Mez is now left in midfield. He's taking huge hits. Trying to get back behind the pillar, but Ursula's Vortex, he's able to immune it with Death's Advance. Desperately trying to avoid line of sight, but Frothy Man's right there with a triple Frozen Orb. Snuts has got him cornered on the other side. They grip Snuts in. It's do or die for Method Orange. Triple fear from Snuts. Man, nothing left in the tank. How is Sidu going to keep them alive? That's it. A big setup on the Snuts. Is he going to be able to get the point shift off? Might have to use it. Paralysis on Cubs. The heat shrink gets out with the Iron Bark. In the meantime, Trill getting low. Method Orange, do or die. Ah! Snuts gets interrupted. Is he going to get it off? Oh my no, goodness. He what? Method Orange, the impossible. What? Claims that game off the mistake of Snuts not using that point shift. Time to carry them all of the way to a game seven. Will it be enough or will the Super Frogs be able to clean up some of their misplays and close this one out and take the fourth grand final of the year? I can't believe that we're still here. I thought Cedar's team was gonna get knocked clean out 4-0, but miraculously off the back of sick plays and what is probably the most fatiguing series we've seen in a while, Method Orange managed to pull off a miracle, but they have to do it again and then again after that. So I don't know if I'm sold yet. They still need more energy. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to see what exactly Me Method Orange is going to switch up in this matchup. What are they going to do? It looks like sitting behind the pillar is probably important for them. These cleave setups, it's just not favorable for them to be in the open. They're susceptible to crowd control. If Cedar gets caught into a polymorph, into a fear, into a silence, that's an opportunity for Super Frogs to land a kill. Whereas for Mez and Trill, it's just so hard to have high uptime on a target and work through a lot of that Restoration Druid healing and try to start pulling out those defensive cooldowns. That's why we see a lot of these cleave compositions. They wait until a little bit more dampening when the Restoration Druid isn't as high. And they can start trading out a lot of those defensive cooldowns like the Diffuse Magic, Touch of Karma, Anti-Magic Shell, and they start getting favorable exchanges. Snuts taking a couple hits here early on, but Cubsy running that Nourish build. Definitely want to be running that as a Druid when playing with two spellcasters. You can just stay max range. Also the balance affinity, which is interesting, as you pointed out, can max range a lot of interrupts and crowd control. So 
The positioning of Super Frogs definitely fell apart at the end of the last game. If they were just very far apart from each other, Nourish would have probably been more than enough to keep Snuts alive. So Super Frogs need to stay on top of their positioning deeper into dampening. Looks like they're trying to ramp up some pressure here onto Mez with that Frozen Orb placed down. And Method Orange can't afford to make any mistakes. Seedu connects a couple big heals, but now Trill is low as well. Diffuse Magic, but Maledix fly in on the Diffuse Magic. Seedu's caught in Horrify. Trill portals out of line of sight. Catches a couple vivifies. Ring of Pieces snuts away from himself. Sidu is still in mid. They might bash Sidu and go Sidu. They bash Sidu. Void form activated. Anti magic zone. Gonna protect Sidu. Might have been a bit of an overreaction though because Wealthy Man held on to his icy veins. Now that defense won't be available to exchange for it. Yeah, double fear by Snuts as he gets gripped behind the pillar. Really the main focus point in this matchup and where we saw Super Frogs fall in the last game is they were able to get through the dispersion, get through the fate of Snuts, and then get an interrupt and avoid him using that life shift and that void, or sorry, that void shift, which is basically a life swap at any point with that void shift. It's a long cooldown. He can exchange his hit points for someone else. Snuts getting bursted down just a little bit, but in the midfield, Wealthy Man's gonna be able to get a decent amount of counter pressure. Nice death grip on the Cubsy into a double leg sweep. Classic Windwalker Death Knight setup here as that forces out a dispersion on Snuts. Clean play on Method Orange. See what they can get done. With Touch of Death available and no Glider's Medallion on eight. Unlikely that they have a stun though to really pair it together to kill Snuts. Looks like Method Orange are just gonna happily sit at the pillar saying, yep, good job guys, we got the dispersion. Let's just chill out for a second, not get ahead of ourselves. If we stay too far out, there's the grip into the stun. Can they KO? Is Trill gonna go for the all-in? They've stolen a part, very surprised to not see Touch of Death from Trill in this advance. I mean, Mez got a full polymorph. Really not gonna go for it there. Trill holds on to it. Maybe he wants to go on to Wealthy Man with no Glyre's Medallion later on. That seemed like a good opportunity, didn't it, Ben? I think Snuts might have still had his fade. So if he touches Death and Snuts fades it, it's basically a waste. So they have to sort of get through the fade as well as the dispersion or basically have Snuts with no trinket. And that's really where they wanna push with that touch of death. But maybe they could have forced it out. Snuts did end up fading to escape. And I think that's one thing Snuts has been doing well is whenever he is in a little bit of trouble, he can use that fade to create some space. It gives you a little bit of a speed boost. You can move away quickly, and it forces Mez and Trill to chase in the open. Yeah, definitely will be the case. Mana even at this point between the Super Frogs and Method Oranges. Method Orange look to do the impossible and reverse sweep four in a row against the Super Frogs in the grand finals of the North American Cup number four. They've had a long road to make it back here for a rematch against the Super Frogs. Can they do it is now the question. If Super Frogs manage to win this, they really assert dominance in the North American region in terms of points. They will significantly pass the boys having already broken in their tie and qualified to the spring finals. Method Orange have not earned enough points to safely say that they are in the same boat. So I would say there's more on the line in the short term for Method Orange to win this. Free tremor on that psychic scream. Nice play by Sidu. Double interrupt. Really sick setup here by Method Orange. Yes, yeah, nuts in a lot of trouble. Forced to use that fire blood ratio as he's kiting in the middle of the map. Cuts he has to get a dispel. Maledix flying in from Method Orange. One thing I gotta say is Method Orange, they've been making really great pushes with these Maledicks, and Snuts could be in a little trouble. Does have Dispersion in the Void Shift, but Cubsy's gonna find the healing that he needs to keep him nice and stable in this matchup. Good job by Wealthy Man, finding the Polymorphs on CDU. Some decent damage on the Mez. Now Method Orange, they might be looking to retreat, but no, they're pushing forward. They're just gonna be attacking into Thorns. They don't care. They wanna force out the Dispersion on Snuts. They might be able to get it right here, right now. Nice wind shear. CDU really carrying aggressively here. If you can interrupt Nourish, you definitely put the Druid behind, but CDU has to overextend and position in a really awkward and risky spot to be able to do that. It's managed to at least bank them some momentum, but now potentially punished by Wealthy Man as he sits through a Polymorph. Trill and trouble around the corner on match point. Cedar's trying to cross the distance. He walks into a psychic scream. No uh -oh. tremor totem. Trill in trouble. If Wealthy Man can get over there and finish him, anti-magic zone. Trill runs around the corner. They stun Wealthy Man, but Cedar is still so far away. Healing tide totem around the corner, healing his team, but now silenced. Polymorph DR, full polymorph. Mez and Trill still in a 3v2. Just holding on to dear life at this point together around the corner, managed to hold out. Yeah, Icy Vein's gonna be used by Wealthy Man as he wants to uh, keep up the aggression that they found, but unfortunately, Method Orange has completely recovered. In those moments, Cubsy was just throwing in Solar Wraths, trying to take down Trill, and it was such a close call. I think he threw in like eight in a row or something like that, so that little bit of extra damage, Cubsy Man is able to use with the extra range, 
from the Moonkin Affinity. Definitely going to be important in this matchup for them. And I don't think he's ever revealing the fact that he is the Moonkin Affinity. He's never going in the Moonkin form. So Method Orange can never really be sure that he doesn't have the Guardian Affinity. And I really like that from Cubsy. So you do had to expend his main area of effect recovery mechanics. So Healing Tide Totem and Ascendance doesn't have those for slightly less than three minutes at this point. So any frozen orb damage, any void form damage on three targets will have to be power healed through from Sidu. And with dampening in the game, that may not even be possible. Superfrog set themselves up well strategically in the last match as well as this one. They just need to focus on their positioning later into the fight so that they're not stacked up for crowd control, exchange their cooldowns, and then overwhelm Method Orange. And Superfrog should be able to take this can Sidu manage to do it? Can he manage to pull off the upset? They're just hanging on to dear life at this point, looking for any opportunities that expose themselves. Nuts gets gripped in and bursted down. They interrupt Wealthy Man on his, his support. Huge damage actually following up, but a swift mend, is that going to be enough? They really need to try and get an iron bark with this push. They're spending a lot of time in midfield to go for it. Now Sidu is crowd controlled. Trill gets bursted. Gladiator's Maledict plays. He dispels it. Another one in from Ultiman. Diffuse Magic removes that. No third attempt. It's not three position, but Sidu gets counterspelled. Ultiman trying to end this. Trill, if he uses a touch of karma on the mage, can ice block it. Uh oh. Trill's able to recover, but now they've left Mez behind. He's trying to make it back to the team. Yeah, manages to do so. And once again, Method Orange on a defensive position or in a defensive position behind this pillar. Nuts didn't have to use anything in that exchange, though. Super Frogs managed to greet it out. Cubsy didn't even trade out his Iron Bark, so they're going to be feeling completely healthy. Once again, Method Orange is going to be moving in, but this time, Trill doesn't have the luxury of having that diffuse magic, unfortunately for him. Method Orange just crossing the map to this other pillar. They want to take advantage of this larger pillar to grip Snuts out of line of sight, putting out a significant amount of damage. Capacitor stun onto Snuts out of the leg sweep. Ring of Peace gets used, denying Snuts to retreat to Cubsy. Cubsy in a great spot to easily heal up Snuts. Position very far away with the extra range on his abilities from that balance affinity. I'm curious, Sid, how do you feel like that's paying off? Uh, I mean, Feral Affinity would be maybe a bit of extra damage to end the game. It doesn't seem like Guardian Affinity is necessary, so it's just, it's more of a stall-based tactic to go with the Balance Affinity and max range crowd control and add some extra damage and drink safely as well. So it's definitely the safer pick overall. I just would prefer to see Feral Affinity because it's fun to watch Feral Affinity and watch the rest of Druid run around trying to kill people, but Cubsy obviously in a tournament setting wants to take the <laughs> lowest potential risk if he can to find victory. Crowd control initiated by Method Orange, but also on the side of the Super Frogs. Nuts gets bursted. Can't afford to throw. If they lose on Asha Mains, they've then lost both of their best maps. Yeah, and that's going to be devastating for Snuts. Activating Vampiric Embrace as well as his Void Form, getting a lot of additional healing on himself, helping Cubsy out quite a bit. Snuts now in a great position to get some damage out onto Sidu. Mez and Trill, Wealthy Man on the other side of the pillar. Blizzard has been dropped down as well as the Frozen Orbs. Snuts gets gripped in once again. Cubsy might have to play catch up here. He does have Thorns. He will activate it, trying to just force Method Orange to run away. They don't want to be attacking into that Thorn. Sidu doesn't want to expend the amount of mana he really needs to in order to get rid of that buff. And that's going to allow Snuts to do additional damage to Trill and Mez every time they attack. Now that that's faded, Mez and Trill are going to be pushing in. And Trill still has a lot of his defensive cooldowns available. Getting low, though. This is dangerous for Trill. He's trying to heal himself off. He's going to be activating the Fortifying Brew. But Snuts in a great position, running away from the pillar once again. Now Mez left all alone, looking to run away. Gets Tiger's Lust, I believe, from Trill to retreat back to the pillar. We are in 33% dampening of a nail-biter grand final. If you're just tuning in, you definitely want to let your friends know. Join in on this. Maybe with less nail biting, it's kind of gross. Mez gets <laughs> bursted down. Trill's trying to push for a big cooldown. Touch of Death activated. If they can get a dispersion with this, it would be critical. Maybe just get a kill. Huge damage. Snuts fades. Denies it for now. Nourish. Cubsy needs to be careful. Cedar's crossing the map to wind shear him. Cedar's ready and waiting, but he gets polymorphed and clotheslined by Wealthy Man. Now Mez is exposed in midfield, but they activated the Earthen Wall Totem just before that push. Mez is leaving the safety of that Earthen Wall Totem. This is very nice. Stop. Silence! Dispels the anti-magic shield. He has to drink it to gain access to its defense. He's still low on health. Mez throwing the game a bit there by leaving the defense of that Earthen Wall Totem prematurely. Cedar has to give up on the push and reposition. Yeah, but Snuts still with dispersion, still with Void Chip. Oh. 
Great spats getting low. Super Frog's looking to close out this game. Mess still has the anti magic zone. He's not trading it out. Greedy times for Method Orange as CD finally connects the Spirit Link. Now into a full polymorph. Mess into a psychic horror. Do oh. Super Frogs have the damage? Flurry connects from Wealthy Man on the Mez. Now Mez activating the anti magic zone, tanking out a lot of this damage, looking to line of sight. But Method Orange in that exchange basically traded out everything. Uh, and Mez is such a vulnerable target. It is going to be difficult for them to really move in. I mean, Method Orange were in the same position just a game ago, so I don't want to count them out just yet, but this should be the Super Frog series. Can Method Orange manage to do it? They win your Cup, on the heel. See, you trying to hit this, but he gets Psychic Screamed. Mez is now alone. Any Magic Shield soaks up some hits. Trill is Ursul's Vortex in midfield. He's going to get a blasting. Wealthy Man's repositioned around the corner, blinking right on top of Method Orange, trying to get a Polymorph. Bold moves by Wealthy Man, but near two blocks ahead, this much momentum. I don't really blame Wealthy Man. He's still got a game to go away. He definitely needs to be a bit more aggressive if he wants to close this out. Mez and Trill both under fire. No area of effect healing for some time. Touch of Karma available. Has to trade immediately as he is stunned up but manages to stay alive. Maledix are flying in. Sidhu tries to reposition. Everyone on his team is just dead and I feel like I say that so many times and they still manage to win, Ben. And they're still all alive at this point, but Snuts has been so much more greedy with his dispersion in this matchup. He's been holding on to his trinket, still has the void shift. He does not want to throw away this game, playing very, very patiently. Wealthy Ban has been the main man on the team to push in and get aggressive on Method Orange. Mez falling a little bit behind with Snuts not being a very vulnerable target. This is difficult for Method Orange. It's, he is the main kill opportunity for them in this matchup. Earthen Wall Totem gets dropped down to sort of soak up the Blizzard and Frozen Orb. Mez in midfield, incapacitate on the Cubsy. Touch of death committed on Snuts. Now using the dispersion, he's going to be avoiding a lot of that incoming damage. And now Mez on the run with uh, the Polymorph on Sidhu. Method Orange, Trill. I don't know if what they have what it takes to really close out this game at this point. Trill gets bursted. Oh, no. Fuse it. Basically, no health. He's stuck in midfield. Wealthy Man is blasting. He ports. That Glyrus Maledict soaking all the heals. Wealthy Man blinks in. Wealthy Man has just had enough of this. Just die, Method Orange, at this point. They're just holding on to dear life, but refuse to ultimately go down. Wealthy Man now overextended to Portal Shield. Wealthy Man's just bouncing, pressing Ice Lance, saying, please end any magic zone. Denies the kill again <laughs> for just a few more seconds. Can they live to that ascendance? There's nothing left. Ray of Frost fully channeled, and Super Frogs finally close it out 4 2 against. Even got here in the first place, and you have to give it up to Method R. Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is is going to get a little bit further into this tournament. Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.